Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Non-Fungible News. Today, we got to travel all the way yonder to South Korea to, uh, oh, to yes. hang, hang with Victa Victa, who has got um, so much going on and has had so much going on for a number of months now, and it's it's only getting bigger and it's only getting better. So, uh, Mr. Victa Victa, welcome to the show. Glad to have you. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. Thanks for bringing me on uh just hanging out here in the in the park get away from the kids for a little bit and I'm ready to hang out with the the non-fungible news team hell yeah well it looks peaceful where you're at so uh um yeah so for anybody watching that doesn't know victor victor launched uh a series called guardians in january february uh, february 2nd was public February 2nd, and that was a collection of, what, 3,000? Uh, so the A-series on BC was uh, 3,000. Uh, prior to that, I had done, like, 25 little, uh, you know, like, prototypes that we did on uh, World of B. Uh, and those were a couple freestyle ones and then some that were mashed up with the, uh, the V-Lutes. Yeah, the, the V-Lutes, that, uh, that was fun. So the, the big collection, right before that, you were – you were doing a few custom pieces and everybody, a lot of people probably don't know that you were doing those little custom pieces. They may or may not have seen those around. Cause like you said, there's only a handful of them. Uh, everybody in the community is very familiar with you though, and your uh, guardians, a series collection. So what, uh, what kind of got you into doing, doing the guardians and the loot bags and then the transition to, okay, I'm going to do a full on collection. Sure. Sure. Uh, so yeah, like, like I've said recently in spaces and stuff, you know, I've been around V chain for a while, uh, was in, uh, the Vim world community for a long time. And then I kind of started branching out a little bit, um, minted the, uh, the Genesis cards was talking to the world of B team a lot, uh, at the time. And, uh, once they started their, uh, you know, self minting and stuff like that, I, uh, just started drawing a couple little pieces, just having fun. Uh, and I started to kind of formulate the idea of the Guardians in general. Uh, made a couple, and uh, around that time is when I was meeting um, Tom from everywhere, really. Uh, and he kind of introduced me to Brett and the team and all that kind of stuff and instantly fell in love with BC and uh, all the people over there. Um, and Brett was uh, interested after looking at some of my pieces, and uh, he commissioned a couple uh, to kind of pair up with some of the, uh, the V-Loot. Uh, so basically just anyone that had a V-King or a, uh, the v -Loot bag could animate their v -Loot, uh, into whatever. Uh, so I had a lot of fun with that, uh, kind of picked up traction from there. Uh, so afterwards, Tom and, uh, Brad and, uh, Shrimp, we all kind of talked a little bit and, uh, kind of talked a plan and it was like, yeah, you know, I, I think I could probably do this. Uh, so I started getting the, uh, A-Series together. I think I've from from like agreement to make it to finish it maybe it took me about I don't know three and a half four weeks uh, drew all the attributes uh, Tom helped me out with the JSON and metadata and stuff I didn't know how to do that at the time uh, put them all together and we minted it out in about 56 minutes on February 2nd for the public mint uh, at the time I was you know pretty vocal like hey this is only art no utility, so on and so forth, um, but it was well received. You know, people seemed to like it. Uh, a lot of people reached out to me and they're like, hey, this theme would be really nice with, uh, you know, different avenues we could pursue. Uh, so since the people liked it and I obviously love the, the VFAM uh, very much, I was like, hey, you know, I'll explore this. Uh, so that's when I kind of started getting together uh, some more details for how I wanted to do the team leaders to roll that out. Uh, and the more I, you know, explored what I wanted to do, that's when I really kind of got into the idea like, hey, you know, I want to, I want a team for this. I want to kind of build this out. Uh, but more importantly, I want to do it, you know, my way on my timeline and I want to learn how to do it all myself. Uh, absolutely nothing against teams that hire 
off chain or hire you know commissioned artists from you know the civilian sector nothing nothing against that at all um, but me i wanted to learn how to do it myself or i wanted to employ uh, vfam members to help out so now that i've been progressing through that that's exactly what i've been doing i've been uh learning uh various 3d softwares um learning how to do some really basic you know game scripting and all that obviously i'll never be like a you know an xbox you know game company by myself <laughs> but i'm just learning what i can trying to round out my skill set um and you know we're just building up our teams now that i joined uh virtual flame studios uh they give me some support with some of the technical stuff uh as i'm learning through it uh data and intro Shaw and uh, they've been a huge help on that aspect as well. And then uh, I'm currently in the process of hiring uh, some more artists uh, to work with me on my uh, my upcoming phases. And uh, I'm hiring, like I said, hiring in house. I want VFAM artists, VFAM uh, builders building on VChain. You know, I think that's kind of something that sets us apart from um, different blockchains. You know, I spent a lot of time in Cardano last summer last fall and a little bit here still um not not near as much as in the past because it's you know kind of kind of settled in here to the v chain community and and it's nice because um everybody kind of a lot of people do what, what you're doing here and what you're talking about here is using the community that we have to to succeed because you know it takes a village right and and we're um we're we're being that village and a lot of people outside are seeing that and like okay there's there's something going on a little bit different in this community and you're hearing that a lot more lately um i think uh, people are impressed with just the structure of the marketplaces and the community and the art itself and everything so i think we got a a, a good thing going and i i like to hear that you're hiring in-house for for all that yeah. stuff um are you an artist i mean is that your your life career as an artist or is that just a hobby that you've had and uh no you? so right so i'm in the military i've been in the military for uh 18 years now active duty army uh well thank you prior for to class. joining the army i did go to a like a two-year uh like graphic design it was like an all-in-one kind of art school so they did a uh, graphic design web design you know traditional painting um by no means an elite school but it was you know something really fun to do that i really enjoyed prior to the military uh, that was you know early 2000s uh, at the time i was just, you know a young teenager i was like there's probably no money in art you know no real adventure i'll probably get stuck here in, in ohio forever uh, so I joined the military and military while fun and gave me a lot of benefits and definitely changed my life for the better. It's not, you know, an overly conducive place for, to be an artist. So it sucked a lot of motivation out of me for years. Uh, and then maybe a couple years ago, I started kind of getting back into it. Uh, once I had a little free time and, uh, it just kept growing and growing and growing. And then when I uh, found crypto and VeChain, uh, started really talking to the uh, the Vimworld crew and Cream at the time. I was doing some like fan art and stuff for uh, for Vimworld, uh, just like you know basic marketing, you know, just fun stuff like that, having fun. That's when I really fell in love with it again, and was like, that's when the NFTs were kind of picking up, and bought a new tablet and still back into it. So, long answer to your short question. No, I'm in the military, but. It's a hobby turned a job. Like I spend more hours a day now uh, doing, you know, crypto stuff than I do uh, the army, and that's saying a lot. That means I never sleep, so I work a lot. <laughs> Seems to be kind of the common theme with most of us is every every spare minute we get, we're we're grinding away doing, you know, what whatever whatever it is we do in the community. Um, which is a lot. There's a lot. There's plenty for everybody to do. So, um, so how'd you feel about? Because I remember your mints is one of those that I remember. You know, the pieces that I got as I minted, and and you know, it's just one of those things that sticks out in my mind. Um, 
And how, how are you feeling about the mint when you launched versus very shortly after when it was all minted out? Uh, I would say like leading up to the mints, I had at the time, like no worries in the world until about an hour before the mint. And I'm sure everyone's the same. I was nervous as fuck. You know, I'm like, oh shit, you know, now it's time. Like, I wonder what's going to happen. You know, have I done enough? Have I made any mistakes? You know, things like that. Um, you know, I, I tried to make as many possible attributes as possible. Uh, and even then I was like, have I done enough? I don't know. And then when it started, you know, minting and started going and all the notifications are coming up, I was like, oh my God, this is like happening. Uh, afterwards, you know, I felt good. Like I said, at the time I had marketed uh, no utility, so I didn't feel that much pressure yet. Uh, but after it was well received and that was, you know, as someone that went approached it as an artist, uh, I was really kind of, uh, I was really mostly my main concern was like, do, do people like what they got? You know, like, do they enjoy what they're looking at? Do they enjoy how I put it together? So at the time, everyone seemed happy. So I was happy that they enjoyed what they got. Uh, looking back now that I'm, I don't know what, five, six months has passed, I think. I don't know. Crypto, three or four years in crypto time. I would say that my artistic ability now compared to then is like, a hundred times more. So now I look at some of the original pieces. I'm like, what the fuck is that? Like I could have done so much better. And so now I'm just like trying to find more to, I don't know, maybe I'm just critical of myself, but I'm just always trying to find a way to improve now. Well, that's a good thing. I mean, I, I don't, I think you are being critical of yourself because I think everybody, everybody loves it. Um, the guardians, that's one collection that I own that I have never sold. I've never even listed one of my, uh, my guardians pieces because um they're just early on i followed you from early on and and uh have enjoyed it and it's uh it's just one it's kind of one of those staple pieces i i feel in in somebody's wallet it should be in somebody's wallet so anyway uh, good job on all that stuff you know i it's well received and if you're 10 times better than you were then um i think i can speak for the whole community when i say that we're excited for, for what's next. And, you know, and we've seen little snippets and sneak peeks and we'll get into that later. I'm sure. sure. But yeah, Let's get into uh, your integration into virtual flame studios. Okay. Uh, yeah. So like I said, around the time that uh, I started to agree uh, post mint that I would give uh some utility and kind of explore some options uh, with um, the A series guardians. Uh, some of the things that were on the table at the time were like building out maybe a tabletop game or, uh, you know, just doing another follow on collection or, you know, whatever. So as I was exploring those options and kind of putting it together and figuring out what I would need to do those, uh, you know, I found plenty of stuff online where I was like, yeah, you know, I can probably pursue this by myself. Uh, but at the time, and even now, it's like almost every single week on a uh, B chain, you know, Cardano almost every single day, so on and so forth. Like the other major blockchains, there's like a new collection launching almost every single day, uh, which is fine. But all those teams are going, you know, different directions. At, at what point is it just going to be like, okay, fucking there's enough. Uh, let's, let's build collectively. Uh, so I saw the need for people to start kind of clicking up and building collectively and pulling our resources because we have a lot on VeChain. Uh, and uh, I reached out to Flame and I was like, I kind of explained my thought process and uh, said some of the things I would like to pursue. Uh, I know that he at the time was already pursuing some things like that with uh, his Mechalmaniacs project that they're working on. Uh, and they, they agreed, him and Ferb were all about it. And uh, they wanted to bring me on and you know, the rest is history. From there, we've just been building up, a, you know, we unofficially call them pillars. You know, each project lead has a pillar that they're maintaining for the, the foundation. Uh, we're each controlling our own area, but we all help 
each of the other individual projects. So if one is getting overwhelmed, the other one of us can help out and do some like graphic design work or help with some technical stuff or whatever else. Uh, so it's it's really nice to have that team and foundation together because we're just making all of our other ones, you know, more powerful at the same time. Yeah, that's uh, that's amazing that you guys are are able to do that, and and especially because um, I I would have to venture to guess that you've never met any of them in real life. Um, and uh, no, the so Ferg and Flamer brothers they live together. Uh, the rest of us have not met in in real life and so that that's amazing it's amazing to me that these partnerships are are not only possible but it, they're proving to be successful every day sure no and, i think it's i think it's very nice right now that some of the teams are doing it you know uh vc is also starting to do it over there you know kind of pulling resources together and forming a team you know world of v is uh warming up with some of the people that they enjoy in the community to build a team. Uh, you know, everyone's just kind of clicking up right now. Black V markets over there uh, building up a team as well. So it's nice to see all the marketplaces kind of collecting resources and then virtual flame uh, studios collecting resources. So we have like, you know, so much talent in, in the V chain family and, you know, the, why not use it? Why not bring everybody together? A monster is being built right now. One huge monster with the pillars is a really good analogy, even even for the whole community, because there's, you know, there's different marketplaces you can view as pillars. And then inside of their teams, there's different pillars like you guys have going on. Um, and it's evolved so much in the last uh, six, seven months, eight months, whatever, whatever the case. And, you know, yeah, we're in a, a bear market. We don't know the depths of it, where it's going to go, you know, crypto has seen bear markets. It's never seen a global recession. Um, it, you know, there's, there's a lot of unknowns around the corner. And I think most of us are, are here for it, you know, regardless, because we wouldn't know what to do if you took our wallets away right now, you know, you put our, our NFT community away and it's like, what the hell am I supposed to do with my time? Yeah. So it's, uh, I don't know. I guess that's what they call Web3, right? It's I love it. You know, everybody from all over the world can come together in one place. And I would say, I would say without a doubt, you know, in the real life, every one of us, regardless of what country and culture you're in right now, it's very hard to find people that give a shit about crypto or NFTs and all that kind of stuff. So the fact that we can all come together with people from all over the world that do care about it and do enjoy it. It's nice, you know, it's, and we have a lot of, you know, I would say 90 to 95% of us are, you know, really good people that get along really well in the chain community. We have very few bad apples and the ones that are bad apples, we mostly know who they are. Maybe there's one or two sleeping, but we mostly know who they are. Yeah, it's interesting. A lot of people in my real life, they, they know that I'm into crypto and NFTs and, and stuff like this, you know, people watch these videos and uh, but the question they ask is they see things tanking, you know, markets tanking and everything. They always come up smugly. How's your Bitcoin? Like, well, that's really not the question to ask because that's not what I do. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. it's just uh, it's, it's totally different because for me to find. Oh, I've probably done 20, 25 interviews with different people for me to find. Two people out of 250,000 people in my county that I live in that are interested in this would be like impossible. So it's, it's, it is nice to just, you know, be a part of this. Um, so you've, you've got a, a successful project that minted out. You are now putting utility to it. You're on a team. You have a team. What, what are we, uh, what are we looking forward to coming down the line? Sure. So uh, basically what I'm doing right now is, uh, like I said, I've been learning 3D and basic mechanics. Uh, what I'm doing right now is I'm building out a multi-phase ways. I want to be able to make 
my NFT is usable essentially. So I'm tired of seeing a new project drop every single week and most of them are copy paste. Oh yeah, I'm going to do this. Oh yeah, I'll do some staking. Oh yeah, I'll do this. But what are you doing with them? Yes, they have their place in the community and yes, most of them are very successful. Uh, but in my mind, eventually when the bear market's over and uh, two, three years from now, the I'm just trying to think ahead. You know, what can we do with our NFTs? If I own an NFT here, what good does that do me over here? So I was trying to think of ways to make it so that if you own an NFT here, you can use it all over the place. Uh, so what I started to come up with after I was doing all the tinkering and brainstorming is <clears throat> I'm just going to make uh, my collection and some others uh, fully itemized. Uh, and then I'm going to uh, release that as a full inventory. So every single item in the entire Guardians collection has already been made into 3D. Uh, and I'm going to release every single item. And if you own that item, you'll be able to use or build your character in multiple areas. Uh, so the first rollout of that, uh, I've been talking to uh, BC. We're gonna be able to equip those items in uh, the Thunderdome. Obviously it'll be a slow implementation to make sure it works properly. Uh, but with, you know, Emmett has a good concept in his head and we'll, we'll take it slow, no, no real rush. Um, but uh, that'll be part of it. Uh, and then I'm working on uh, building out like multiple mini game, like ecosystems, uh, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm just me and some artists I'm hiring from the VFAM. I am by no means a AAA studio, so I'm not gonna have an Xbox, you know, quality, uh, you know, like, I don't know if you've seen recently the uh, footage that came out from some of the sneak peeks of what they think the other side deeds over on Ethereum are gonna look like, but that's like, that's like big money production. So obviously I'm not going to do that, but uh, I've been building in multiple little game engines and I've already imported all of my items that I've made into every single one of those engines. Uh, they all work properly. Uh, they all flow on avatars properly. Um, and you'll be able to have that NFT that you can use in multiple locations. Uh, so then if other people decide to build out ecosystems as well, it's too easy. We hook the items into it. I already have all the renders that I can import into their system as well. And then we can use those NFTs all over the place because I've already pre-made all the renders and multiple levels of quality so that if I want to import it into something really nice and, and flashy, I already have that, you know, 14 million part render that I've already made. If I need to put it into something low, like a Roblox or something, I already have it downgraded and refined down to 10,000 parts, which is what you need for that. Uh, so I've already done all the work. I'm basically building, you know, an SDK that can be plug and play into multiple ecosystems and multiple areas uh, so that your NFT can be used in multiple areas. Uh, I pull some of my motivation from that, from watching, you know, things like uh, uh, Ready Player One. You know, I think we are easily five, 10 years away from having anything like that, uh, you know, conceptually. But, you know, I always come back to that scene in my head when the, uh, you know, he can pick up his car and move it into one game and then put his car back in his pocket and then go to another game and do it, and, you know, change your clothes in multiple areas, you know. You know, I just think that's fun. I think it's something that's doable and in, in small scale. Uh, and I think it's, you know, just gives something fun and new for people to do with their NFTs. So. So. Being able to go into these different games and Thunderdome and stuff, you're talking you'll have an avatar or I'll have an avatar and I'll be able to take different items that you have uploaded in there. And do yep. I buy those items as NFTs to, to complete my avatar and change them out as I want? Or is that something that if you buy the avatar, then you can change the, the appearance. So what I'm doing uh, right now is like I said, I'm not building a huge game on my own, but what I am doing is having all the, the pieces. So I will make some mini games. Uh, I've already been conceptually designing them, things like that. Uh, I'm going to try and make some, uh, I already have some like basic avatars. So basically like in my mind, uh, for the mini games at least that I'm personally going to do, uh, you'll have a default avatar 
that's just like a plain default avatar. Uh, and it can already read your wallet and it'll know like, hey, you know, uh, Tricky Boom, he has this helmet, he owns this armor set, he owns this, uh, you know, all these weapons in over here, all these helmets over here, and you can open it up and you can pick and choose like, oh, I want to wear this helmet, I want to hold this weapon, I want to wear this uh, armor set right here. Uh, they're categorized uh, based upon uh, rarity category, uh, which would then change your stats in a mini game. Or uh, if it's just like I'm going to build multiple little tiny mini games, uh, some will be stat based, uh, some will be just hey, I'm just hanging out exploring the area just to kind of do like a stylish. Uh, so the way that I'm mentally structuring the uh, uh, the metadata on it, it's not going to limit you to one, like this fucking armor set has plus two defense. I'm going to leave that open to the ecosystem. So like when we uh, put it on the VC arcade, for instance, uh, it would have a category that we agree upon with whatever projects are using it on the VCRK. Uh, if it's then implemented in this game and the owner of that game wants to have that one be plus 10 defense instead of plus two, too easy because it's not limited in the metadata. So mostly it's just, I own all the, uh, the renders already and we can import them into all these individual systems. Awesome. So is this going to be like a, uh... Is there going to be like a play to earn or is it just going to be strictly play to play, hang out, have a good time and enjoy yourself? So it's going to be. So this inventory system is just the first uh, phase of what I'm doing, essentially. So depending on where it's used, it can be anything. So like on VC Arcade, uh, as Brett has talked, and I won't get into it too much because that's that's their baby. Uh, but essentially what they've released publicly is uh, they'll have a couple mini games that they make just kind of, hey, this is what you can do on VC. Uh, and then anybody can implement it however they want afterwards. So say uh, someone has their own fight club or whatever the hell they want to do, or uh, that could be play to earn if you're doing it for VC tokens or whatever else, so on and so forth. Uh, for the mini games that I'm going to work on, um, I'll release more information on that uh, as they come, but some of them will be uh, kind of like adventure based. Like what I'll what I'm willing to say right now about one of them, I'm I'm conceptualizing right now and kind of tinkering with uh, with the scripting to make sure it'll work. Is uh, essentially like adventure based, where uh, you could. Maybe like publicly when I release the uh, inventory, there's, you know, common weapons, rare weapons, you know, epic weapons, things like that. But inside of this adventure mode, uh, you know, like maybe the first person that gets to this one part of a, an area could win a legendary item that's a one for one item. Now they have, you know, something like that. So it's more like play and earn, I guess you would call it, as opposed to like, hey, every day you log in and you can win some tokens. Um I think a lot of the big companies, even on Ethereum right now, that are doing some of the play to earn lately, their their user base has been like, like they dumped hundreds of millions of dollars in some of those games and they have, you know, 100, 200 active users every day. Like, I think the play to earn and more community driven games where people are just having fun with each other and you can play and earn, uh, whether it's new NFTs or bragging rights or, you know, whatever else. I think that'll be more fun for the community and more like engaging. Uh, but like I said, the way that I'm structuring the NFT uh, metadata, you'll be able to use them however we want. So, you know, each month or each quarter, we could always just release, you know, people want to do this kind of thing and then I can just build that kind of thing. So. And obviously you're open to uh community input. You're kind of, driven by the community because your community kind of kind of helps to guide you with uh their input and hey we love this or you know sure we're not really into this right now and, and you're more than more than happy to uh take all that input in it sounds like mm -hmm. yeah and like i said i'm 
not a, uh, you know, triple A company. You know, I'm not going to be out here making MVG promises, nothing against them if they're building over there. I'm just, just for context, like I'm not promising, uh, you know, an Unreal Engine 5 open world game or anything. I'm just, you know, building some mini games and building some NFTs that we can interact with and grow it from there. You're building uh, something you know, for a bear market person. where, what's that? You're building something for a person like myself. I'm not a gamer. Yeah. Don't don't intend to be a gamer, but I do play the V-Punks play to earn game because it's, mm -hmm. you know, I earn a little bit. But at the same time, I'm looking forward to something simple like that where I can interact with other people. Absolutely. And that's realistically like I've been teaching myself how to do this for, I don't know, a couple months now. So, I mean, realistically, I there's no way in hell right now I could build, you know, an open world multiplayer rpg <laughs> but i am fully capable of hey these people can equip items and move around and interact with each other and have mini games uh, i think that's very feasible uh, specifically with uh, the team we're building over on virtual claim studios right now <clears throat> i think it's very feasible that we could pull off some mini games and uh, some engagements and we have plenty of very talented uh, 3d artists uh, that are interested in, uh, in helping kind of develop these ecosystems um, so i think that i think that smaller uh mini game uh mindset you know i want to i want to deliver something smaller i think that for most people i think will go a lot farther than than promising you know the mvg or or like what you were saying about all the the hundreds of millions of dollars going into ethereum projects and no user base i think you know, I think if somebody comes into the V chain NFT ecosystem right now, promising this huge game, like what happened with MVG, the same thing's going to happen again. Mm -hmm. Whereas you come in and you know you're going to build a smaller game. Okay, well you're going to build a couple smaller games. VC is going to build a couple smaller games. V Punks has a smaller game. Um, you know, all these different projects with something small that we can just dabble with and we're not waiting years and years for it. I think that's the way to go. Sure. I think that's the smart way to do it. And I think that's going to uh, attract a lot more people. I think it's good too, because <clears throat> it's not only allowing me uh, and, and virtual flame studios together to kind of figure it all out and learn uh, some of the uh, artists that we're hiring as freelancers or are going to potentially bring on, you know, full time later it's letting them kind of figure it out too. So as a community, we're figuring out how to do all this stuff uh, during a bear market, which is the perfect time to figure it out. And yes, they are small little mini games. They're nothing, you know, world changing yet, but you know, who's to say after, you know, one or two years of us all tinkering and figuring it out that together we don't create something world changing, you know, anything's possible. We have enough talent in the VeChain community to figure it out. So I think we take it bite by bite and, you know, just keep progressing and keep figuring out how to do new things. And I think as a community and especially over at uh, Virtual Flame Studios, I think we're going to be able to pull off some cool stuff. I think so, too. I think, uh, you know, Flame's got the he's well, he's got the community. You know, he started the the Monday space and VeChain Thursday and everything and bringing on people like you, bringing on Dripshaw and, and uh data before dishonor i think it's it's all good things that are coming down the line um we just got a a brief moment or two left but uh you got any final parting words for the community uh let's see i've been rambling a lot sorry it's all good really like i said uh i've been just teaching myself how to do all this stuff just because I really just want to figure it out and make myself a better asset for the community. Um, and I can't promise the world, but I can definitely promise that I'll be here every single day. I'm in the spaces every day. Um, and even if I only grow a little bit every day, I'm, I'm just trying to grow and just trying to make myself, you know, a better asset for the community. And uh, I think now that I'm partnered up with uh, virtual flame studios, I think we're going to, I think we're gonna have some fun this year 
Hell yeah, I couldn't agree more. Just a little bit of growth every day. Don't overpromise, under deliver, and keep on building. It's all going to be good. Sure. All right. Well, thank you, my friend. I appreciate your time. And uh, I think your day just got started not too long ago. So, oh, yeah. It's pretty early here. Made a good deal with the kids. All right. Well, best of luck. Yeah.